What is up Insaners and welcome to another video where we'll be doing a review of Game Week 21. We'll look back at our FPL team and discuss how every side and player performed over the week along with team selection for the next Game Week, Game Week 22. We'll also be talking about captain picks for the coming Game Week. This was another week where most of the premiums blanked and a lot of players didn't feature as they were rested. Mo Salah was the only one that gave a double digit haul and we'll talk more about it in the later parts of the episode. We're also doing a watch list today, which is basically players to watch out for for the next few game weeks with the view of transferring them to your teams. Hopefully this should help you plan your coming transfers in a better way. If you like today's video, do give it a thumbs up. All the support has been amazing so far. We really appreciate your feedback as well. Make sure you subscribe to our channel Insanely Football. We'll be doing an in-depth analysis of all the games as well, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get into the action straight away. We scored 61 points with a small red arrow at the end of it. Our rank has gone down just a bit to about 240,000. This game week was a bit frustrating for all the FPL managers, including us. Eni Martinez put in a great performance with a clean sheet and 3 bonus points. The Argentinian started off a bit shaky with a series of nervy kicks which went low and wavered. Martinez was first made to work by Armstrong and saved well at the near post. After the break, with Saints much more menacing, the stopper produced a really brave save to deny Che Adams as he rushed out to deny the ex-Blue striker after he was slipped in by Ings. Martinez showed good positioning, a strong skill of his, to kick clear when Ings raced away. He also saved well from Bednarak late on and fully deserved his 10th clean sheet of the season. He made a save from Burton as well, brilliant performance, he has been a star man and saved us from having a bad game week whenever we've needed him. We had Stones and Dyer, who didn't start their respective games. Stones was benched by Pep Guardiola. Americ Laporte partnered Ruben Diaz in the heart of defence as Pep finally seemed to get his first choice centre-back pairing to start a game. Stuart Dallas, who we had benched, came on for Stones and gave us 7 points. Had a brilliant game throughout, both going forward and defensively. His play in the build-up to Leeds' third goal was very good too. Best performance we've seen him play in midfield in a Leeds shirt this season. So overall, we were really happy with the substitution. Eric Dyer was the other defender who didn't feature this week. Now there could be two reasons for his absence. He had a really poor game against Liverpool and made a few mistakes that helped Liverpool secure a 3-1 win. Spurs are playing Chelsea midweek and there are high chances that he was just rested by Mourinho, keeping that game in mind. Spurs had a really poor game and struggled to carve out chances, losing the game 1-0 to Brighton at the Amex Stadium. Sufal came in place of Dyer and he was in fact one of the better players in the West Ham team facing Liverpool. He kept the dangerous Andy Robertson reasonably quiet and did well in the air against the much taller Origi. Wonderful delivery from a first half set piece but couldn't provide an outlet going forward. Also, West Ham conceded 3 goals in the game so we could only muster a single point from him. Our third defender and the only one who started from our starting 11 was James Justin of Leicester City. He had a very average game, gave away too many cheap fouls and took too long to shoot when he was well placed early on in the second period. He struggled in dealing with the threat of Rafinha out wide, a rare bad game for the brilliant youngster who needs to further improve his defensive skills. He got forward well and started the move for the Barnes goal with a terrific header so that was a plus but overall not the performance that we were hoping for. We played a strong midfield this week with 5 across the centre. Coming first to the top scorer Mo Salah. With a reshuffle at the top, he found himself adrift of the play as Hammers looked to close down one of the clear threats in what was a two-man attack. But a player of his quality only needs a couple of half chances before he unleashed that killer blow, which he did so twice with finesse and pinpoint accuracy. His second was a pick of the bunch, with the exquisite touch and a deft finish, a thing of beauty, to complete a stupendous team move, taking his tally to 21 goals this season. Salah's prowess has often been underappreciated, but that's four seasons in a row he's hit the 20 mark, and it's only January. Overall, he gave us 15 points this week. Unlucky not to have captained him as we went with form rather than fixtures and it did hurt us in the overall score. Coming to Harvey Barnes, he was one of the players we brought in this game week in place of Rafinha. Barnes was virtually unstoppable during a 12-minute period of the game which was followed by an equally ineffective display in the final third. Things didn't really work for him in the game. He lit up the game with an outstanding goal but overall he didn't get too many chances to charge at the Leeds defence after that. His off-the-ball runs were good though, as was his passing around the box. An okay transfer as he scored 8 points overall, 3 more than Rafinha, but was surely expecting a lot more from him and Leicester City who surely missed Wadi in this game. Now Gundogan retained his place in our squad and was in fact our captain punt for this week. Once again, he was in his elements. He might not have managed to find the back of the net this week, but the German international did keep things ticking while setting a quick tempo to the game. He delivered a game-high 3 key passes as well, all while retaining an excellent passing rate of 91%. 
the city midfielder worked his socks off again combined excellently with Fernandinho to help his side hog the possession stats. He looked a little out of position though on the left at times and should be reinstated in a double pivot if Pep wants to get the best out of him. Ultimately, he got a clean sheet against Sheffield United but overall the captain move surely didn't work out. Jack Grealish from Aston Villa returned with an assist and clean sheet point, taking his score to 6 for this week. He was another player we got in this week. He surely was Villa's best player on the pitch during the opening 45, which was topped off with a delightful ball for Barkley's header for Grealish's 11th assist of the season. He won countless free kicks in the second half, which helped Villa up the pitch. Overall, he put in a great shift, picking up the loose balls on the halfway line and driving down each flank, looking to provide a dangerous ball into the box. The biggest disappointment of the week though was yet another blank from Bruno Fernandes in terms of his goals and assists against Arsenal. He's just provided one assist in his last five games for Man United. He's going through a rough patch like Salah a few weeks ago and surely needs a goal to get back into the action. He always seemed capable of creating something out of nothing and a free kick deflected just over. Against Arsenal, he faded away in the second half, providing only three points including one for the clean sheet. In terms of our attack, we started with two up front in a 3-5-2 setup and both of them blank. We got in Calvert-Lewin for the injured Harry Kane as he was facing a struggling Newcastle side. The move clearly didn't come off as he blanked and only gave us two points. Another long, frustrating afternoon for the Everton forward. He was deprived of good service and found difficulties in navigating through the Newcastle defence that was constantly around him. He did tee up James with a beautiful back heel but the Colombian shot was saved. There were no real chances for him to score but he tried to make the most of what was available. Overall. He didn't really have any meaningful touches inside the box of note and that speaks of how devoid of creativity those around him were. A frustrating afternoon for the striker certainly. Mikel Antonio was the other striker that we started. He also blanked and cut a frustrated figure throughout the game. He battled well with the little service that he got but skewed West Ham's best chance of the game wide before Salah's opening goal for Liverpool. He kept making willing runs down the channels but nothing really came out of it. Throughout the game, he struggled to impose himself against Phillips and that was a bit surprising. Now in terms of our bench, a couple of players came in but the biggest call was leaving Patrick Bamford on the bench and it clearly backfired. He was the man of the match against a poor Leicester City side, scoring a goal and providing two assists. He played an excellently baited pass to set up Dallas to make it 1-1 in the game. He made a lot of good runs in behind that were threatening and gave Leeds midfield a lot of options. He caused enough problems that Leicester switched to a back three at halftime. He scored a brilliant goal to put Leeds 2-1 up with 20 minutes to go. He was unselfish to set up Harrison for the third Leeds goal which killed off the game. Definitely not at his best against Newcastle United but this was up there for his best performance in a Leeds shirt. 15 points missed from Patrick Bamford and a different captaincy option in Salah could have made the game week look very different. But this is what it is and we have to move on. Now coming to the fixtures for game week 22, we start the week with the bumper bottom of the table clash between Sheffield United and West Brom. It's a must win for Sheffield and the Blades will move within a point of West Brom having a much better goal difference. West Brom on the other hand would be looking to leapfrog Fulham and catch Brighton trying to get out of the relegation zone. A struggling Wolves side who have lost 3 of their 5 games with no wins will face Arsenal who are unbeaten in their last 5 games and would be looking to close the gap to the top 6 this week. Then Man United face Southampton who were very unlucky not to get anything from the game against Aston Villa. Man United though have a very poor record at home this season, only winning 4 of their last 10 games played. Two struggling teams in Newcastle United and Crystal Palace face each other and would look to build some momentum after their respective wins against Everton and Wolves. Then it's the league leaders Man City facing Burnley away from home. Burnley surprised Liverpool a couple of game weeks back but were completely outplayed by Chelsea this week. It should be a hard fought contest but City have too much quality for Sean Dyke's men. Fulham then entertain Leicester City at home having drawn a huge game against West Brom. They need to start picking up points if they want to stay in the league this season and could take advantage of Leicester's poor performance against Leeds. Speaking of Leeds, they play next against Everton. After their strong showing in Everton's shock defeat to Newcastle, they will fancy their chances against the Toffees who are on a mixed run with two wins, two defeats and one draw in their last five games. Aston Villa and West Ham is going to be a very exciting contest as both teams have performed well this season. West Ham are in a Europa League spot right now, having only dropped points against Liverpool in their last five games. Aston Villa scraped through against Southampton and would hope for a better showing from their attackers against the Hammers. The current Premier League champions Liverpool face Brighton this week who will be fresh from their win against Mourinho's Tottenham. Liverpool also look on the rise with impressive wins against Tottenham and West Ham. We end the game with a mega clash between Tottenham and Chelsea. Yes, it's a London derby. Spurs are stuck in 6th place and would be looking to move upwards after a couple of back-to-back -back losses. 
Chelsea have been decent under Tuchel so far and can move above Spurs if they win this week. Lots of great matches coming up, you should surely not miss the action. Now before we cover our Game Week 22 team, we would like to talk about a few players to watch out for the coming game weeks. These are a part of our watchlist series, have decent fixtures and could be vital in getting you higher up in the FPL rankings for the coming game weeks. We start with the first name on the list, Matt Target. The Aston Villa defender has featured in every Premier League for Villa this season. He has secured 11 clean sheets at the back and is the 6th highest scoring defender in the game right now. His attacking numbers have improved in the last 5 game weeks where he's provided 2 assists and has an expected assist of 0.9. Aston Villa have great fixtures till game week 30, facing only Leicester and Arsenal as tricky opponents. Aston Villa have great fixtures till game week 30, facing only Leicester and Arsenal as tricky opponents, but the way they have been playing, those fixtures do have a great point scoring potential in FPL terms. Matt Target is a great option if you want to double up in the Villa defence, or if you're looking to cover in case you don't own Martinez in goal. Villa have also played the least amount of games this season, so they should be having a couple of double game weeks at least, and that adds more value in getting someone like a Target in your FPL team. Our second name on this list is Luke Shaw from Manchester United. The left-back has hit great form in the last few weeks for the Red Devils. He's top in terms of key passes and big chances, created among all FPL defenders over the past 5 game weeks. He also tops the list for expected assists during the same time. Man United have not kept many clean sheets this season, but 3 of their 5 overall have come in their last 5 games. One slight issue with Shaw would be the risk of rotation with Alex Telles in the mix, but considering how Telles has performed and the importance of the left-back role in the United setup, he should play most of the games till the time he's fit. Man United have great fixtures up to game week 25, post which they play Chelsea and Man City. Currently priced at only 4.8 million, Luke Shaw is a good cheap entry in the United defence and allows you to upgrade your other players either in defence, midfield or attack. Surely a player to watch out for the next few game weeks. Our third name on the list is also a defender and it's a surprising one. Antonio Rudiger from Chelsea. Antonio Rudiger has kept two clean sheets in Thomas Tuchel's first couple of games in charge. The informed Chelsea defender impressed again in the 2-0 win against Burnley this week. The German international has helped his team record 7 clean sheets when starting the season across all competitions. His career at Chelsea looked in jeopardy after reports that he had clashed with captain Asper Liquetta in training multiple times. But despite having fallen behind Kurt Zuma and the summer arrival Thiago Silva earlier in the campaign, Rudiger has been a prominent face under Tuchel so far. At only 4.5 million, he's the cheapest entry in the Chelsea defence. He won't provide any attacking threat, but surely a great option in terms of clean sheets, especially now that Tuchel is focusing on being solid at the back. He's only owned by around 1% FPL managers right now, and you would not lose anything by having him in your squad and even playing him in the upcoming fixtures. Coming to midfielders, Wilfred Zaha is another player who has great potential to score big points in the coming game weeks. He started the season with a bang, but has gone a bit quiet in the last 10 games, scoring only 2 goals. He has 10 goal attempts in the last 5 game weeks. His expected goals in the same time are a respectable 1.22. He's also played 3 key passes to his Palace teammates. Crystal Palace have a great run of fixtures in the next 7 games. They play Newcastle, Leeds, Burnley, Brighton, Fulham, then they face Tottenham which might be a bit tricky and then West Brom. If you're looking for an attacking player from Palace, it has to be Wilfred Zaha. He has been a bit inconsistent this season though, but he's surely due a big double-digit haul and the fixtures are there to back that claim. He's also not very expensive, priced at only 7.2 million right now, so you can easily slot him in your midfield. He is the 6th highest in terms of points among all midfielders this season and can surely compete with the premium options for the upcoming game weeks. Definitely someone that you should think of getting in your team in the near future. Now another player that has been very impressive is Harvey Barnes. We have got him in our team making that transfer in game week 21 and straight away he delivered for us scoring 8 points against Leeds United. He has scored 2 goals and provided 2 assists in his last 5 game weeks. He also has created 11 chances for his Leicester mates along with 12 goal attempts. Leicester City had a poor game against Leeds United but have a particularly good run of fixtures facing only Arsenal and Liverpool in terms of top sides in the next 10 games. The best thing about Harvey Barnes is his low price. He's only 6.9 million right now and close to just 7% ownership. That automatically makes him a differential option when compared to the likes of Grealish, Zaha and his lesser teammate James Madison. He's also quite cheaper than all of these players and surely a great player to have for the next run of fixtures. Now coming to our team selection for game week 22, we have a pretty decent team considering a couple of extra transfers that we have done over the past few weeks. We have about 5.7 million left in the bank and one free transfer for this week. In terms of a playing 11, it's a bit tricky this week. No changes for the goalkeeper slot, Martinez continues to be a great option with an inspiring performance against Southampton. He's top for goalkeepers in FPL right now. West Ham could be a tricky one from a defensive point of view though. We are again playing a 3-man back this week. Stones continue to lead our defence and has been brilliant for us this season. 
Laporte played the last game and Stones might not start, but Pep is known to frustrate FPL managers every season and nothing with him is set in stone. Surely not going ahead with any City defenders is a scary sight at the moment. Our second option in defence is James Justin. It's really difficult to not pick Justin ahead of their game against Fulham, who have struggled to score goals in general. He had an off game against Leeds, but has been great going forward and provides a solid cover in defence. Brendan Rodgers would be expecting his side to bounce back and Fulham have a difficult game on their hands. The third player in our defence was a bit tricky to pick. We have gone ahead with Sufal from West Ham, facing Aston Villa and gets the nod ahead of Dallas this week. West Ham have just conceded two big chances in their last four matches that's only bettered by Leicester City and Man City during the same time. Sufal has been good in attack and solid at the back. He was one of the better players in the defeat against Liverpool and has surely the potential for attacking returns in this one. We are playing four across the midfield this week with Bruno Fernandes, Mo Salah, Harvey Barnes and Jack Grealish with Ikai Gundogan on the bench at the moment. It's surely a bit risky not to have Gundogan play against Burnley though. Mo Salah has come back in form at the right time. He put in a man of the match performance against West Ham United, scoring a brace and getting maximum bonus points. He has 15 goal attempts and has created 7 chances in the last 5 game weeks. Liverpool have a couple of tricky fixtures coming up against Man City and Leicester. Mane and Firmino got rested this week and especially with the Man City game so soon, there is a slight chance that he might get rested and that makes captaining Salah a bit harder, but he's definitely a good pick for this week. Our second midfielder is Bruno Fernandes. His returns have surely come down. His last goal was in game week 17, which was a penalty, and his last non-penalty goal was in game week 15, so a bit worrying for Fernandez owners. We still feel that it's just too early to probably transfer him out right now. You'll also have a lot of value invested in him. Not that money is a problem, as a lot of FPL managers would have transferred out KDB and Kane. Harvey Barnes and Jack Grealish complete our midfield four. We are playing the long game especially with Grealish, with the possibility of double game weeks as well. He has been phenomenal so far this season, creating 16 chances in the last 5 game weeks. He's also ranked third in terms of expected assists during the same time, only behind Fernandes and KDB, and those are just insane numbers at that price point. Barnes returned against Leeds with a goal, but now is playing a Fulham team, so he'll definitely have more goal attempts and the chance to increase his goal tally. Coming to our forwards, we're going with three up top, Bamford, Antonio and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Bamford punished us last week, but we are going to take a chance with him. There were some injury concerns but he has enough time to recover for the game against Everton. Everton were bad and he will surely have some chances to get some points in that game. Same for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. The way Leeds play, they are very attacking leaving a lot of space behind and that gives a chance to Calvert-Lewin to take advantage. Antonio is playing an Aston Villa side who have kept only two clean sheets in the last six games and he will definitely have a lot more chances in the game than he had against Liverpool. In terms of our transfers this week, we have an option of getting Cancelo or Ruben Dias in, but we've surely missed out on some good returns from both defenders. They have a couple of tough fixtures coming up in Liverpool and Tottenham. Also, after this week, it gets a bit harder to predict who might be starting out of Stones, Cancelo and Dias. Stones and Cancelo were rested in the last game against Sheffield United and they might start, but then the Liverpool game is also there that would surely be on Pep's mind. Ruben Dias is the most nailed one right now, so in case we go ahead with the transfer, we'll definitely choose him over Cancelo. The other option is to roll the transfer and not make any changes this week. We can save this transfer for the upcoming possible double game week 24. City also might have two games that week, so this transfer can be used then. Now coming to captaincy punts, there are a couple of decent options. There is Mo Salah against Brighton that has to be the most popular captain's choice along with Bruno Fernandes from Man United. Fernandes has blanked in the last few games, but against Southampton, there are high chances that he would get something out of the game. Raheem Sterling was also rested against Sheffield United, and he's another premium option who could be a good captaincy shout this week. In some alternate options, we've got Jack Grealish against West Ham. West Ham have looked good defensively, but Jack Grealish has all the skills to unlock that defence and could be a good punt this week. A lot of FPL managers suffered after losing confidence in Patrick Bamford, but his performance against Leicester City would make a lot of FPL managers make him the captain in their team. He can be a great differential captaincy option this week. Our last alternate choice is Mikel Antonio. It's even more risky to captain Antonio, but there are high chances of him scoring in the game against Aston Villa and it should be an exciting watch. So that'll be all for this episode guys. Make sure you get all the transfers done before the deadline. Do hit the like button if you found this video useful. Do remember to tell us your transfer thoughts this week in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel Insanely Football. Hope you had a good game week 21. Don't feel bad if you sold Bamford or benched him against Leicester. Surely better times coming ahead. All the best to all the FPL managers. Have a good week. Be safe and I'll see you in Saners next time.